A second brightly colored ball dropped from the large basket and rolled down the steel track to join the first as Ayla ran out of the kitchen, hastily unwrapping a small pink ticket. Why didn't you tell me it started? My wife demanded angrily, plopping down on the couch in front of the TV and fiddling with her reading glasses. Every week I had to buy Isla a lucky ticket for the Mega Millions lottery, and every Saturday night, almost without exception, she insisted on watching the drawing live on TV. Very few excuses were acceptable for missing the Saturday night lottery show, and we recorded the show whenever it happened. I'm not a lottery fan, but I'm Irish, and I like riding horses, so I didn't mind buying Isla her lottery ticket every week. I like to think I knew something about horses, but I was probably fooling myself. Sometimes, hoping for a big win, I would bet too optimistically on an underdog. At odds of 99-1 or better, I was never lucky, and the nags probably ended up in a glue factory. Realistically, I knew it was very unlikely that such a shot would be successful. In contrast, Isla believed that it was only a matter of time before she won the jackpot in the random number lottery. Unlike betting on horses with odds of 99-1, the odds of her winning the jackpot were 25 million to 1. When I first met her, I thought Ayla would be a good match for me. A feisty Scottish girl from Aberdeenshire, she was more than confident in the verbal skirmishes of everyday life, be it with family and friends or with strangers. After three years of marriage, I thought her only flaw was her desire for material possessions and wealth, perhaps due to her Scottish heritage. Personally, I was content with having enough money for the simple things in life, like a good crack and a few pints in the pub with friends, or a day at the races. As my old dad used to say, enough is like a feast. Frozen on the edge of her chair, Ayla looked from the TV to a small piece of paper held tightly in her hand. The tension grew as successive balls appeared one after another, and their numbers were displayed on the TV screen. Oh my God, Patty, she exclaimed, her eyes widening in amazement. I won! I won! I won! Hold your horses for a minute, Ayla, I quickly intervened. I have to tell you something. No, she answered immediately, jumping to her feet. It's me who needs to tell you something. This is my lottery ticket and this is my money. I'm leaving you right this minute and I'm going to go and live in a big villa in Spain with Jimmy Riddell. Don't try to stop me. Stunned, I leaned back in my chair, my mouth open and my chin resting on my chest. The revelation that Isla had apparently cheated on me with her work colleague took the wind out of my sails. As she hurried away, presumably to gather her things, I wondered if I should say or do anything to mitigate the unfolding disaster. I decided it was best to at least give her a chance to change her mind, although I expected it to be too late. It didn't take long before she appeared again, dressed in her favorite dress, carrying a small suitcase and coat in her hands. By that time, I was already on my feet and ready to meet her. Are you sure you want to do this? Damn sure, she replied as she walked out the front door. I decided not to tell her that she had unknowingly watched a recording of a lottery show that happened many months ago. Her ticket was not a lucky draw. The numbers I chose were the same as the winning numbers from the old show. It was a stupid idea, but today was the 1st of April, and I thought it would be funny to see how she would react to winning the lottery. I didn't have a chance to explain that it was an April Fool's Day joke. She'll find out soon enough. The only real winner was me. I got rid of my cheating wife for the price of a lottery ticket and won my freedom. Talk about the luck of the Irish. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.